Elizabeth Warren's campaign may be over, but questions about who was funding her super PAC remain, at least until last week, uh, when her campaign finance filings were due. Uh, so now, turns out, Persist PAC, which was Elizabeth Warren's super PAC, uh, that was supporting her candidacy into Super Tuesday was funded by mainly one person, Carla Jurvetson. Uh, so now Carla Jurvetson is a Silicon Valley mega donor who has made over 500 donations in the last year alone. She provided a shocking 96% of Elizabeth Warren's super PAC financing. She gave a donation of $14.6 million. That's all for Elizabeth Warren. And that super PAC spent $9 million before Super Tuesday. Now, look, Super Tuesday, uh, what happened in Super Tuesday to Bernie Sanders was disastrous. Uh, could he have used Elizabeth Warren's help? Yes. What happened instead? Her super PAC bet spent $9 million in ads going against Bernie Sanders. So... I don't think they were all targeted against Bernie Sanders, uh, but nonetheless, it hurt Bernie Sanders' candidacy. Uh, and now Joe Biden, I mean, look, the media is saying presumptive front runner, right? Or presumptive nominee, I should say. Well, look, Bernie Sanders is $300 gets behind. Now the game has changed. With everything that's going on right now and Bernie Sanders' policies being necessary, and Bernie Sanders being a leader, yeah, there could be a chance. Could be a chance. But getting back to, uh, of course, uh, Elizabeth Warren's donors, right? Uh, so now, let's see. Um, wealthy donors, uh, even Barbara Lee, right? Uh, Barbara Lee is a prominent Democratic donor in Massachusetts. Women vote. Uh, the Super PAC affiliate of Emily's List. Uh, and other wealthy donors also provided si significant funding for Persist PAC. Jervidson, however, is a physician and a philanthropist, uh, and over the last three years, according to The Intercept, has lavished Democratic candidates with funding, with an eye towards supporting Democratic women, including conservative Democratic uh, Arizona Senator Kristen Sinema, as well as progressive insurgent Jessica Cisneros. So look, I supported uh, Jessica Cisneros. I was not in favor of Kristen Sinema. Uh, well, Jervison funded both. So let's be fair about that and supported both. Okay. Uh, so again, a mixed bag, right? But she is supporting women uh, and she's supporting Democratic women. But wait, hold on. There's one donation there uh, to a specific candidate that was a little bit troubling. Uh, and that is... Um, one to the Senate campaign of former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio. There was a $2.7 million donation to his campaign. Oops. Uh, oh, now, okay, so Warren supporters are like, uh, that Joe, Ho Joe Arpaio thing? Uh, look, uh, that's just, uh, that's, uh, that's so that they could hurt Republicans against Kristen Cinema, right? Uh, so Kristen Cinema ended up winning the Arizona seat. And so, well, I mean, there's your proof, right? Well, hold on there. Uh, it also could be the fact that maybe, and this is my speculation, of course, uh, maybe this donor wanted to play both sides. I mean, I mean, think about it, right? You have the ear uh, donation. Look, you don't give a donation unless you want to have influence over a campaign. You don't give those large donations. You think they're doing it for their health? No, they're not. No, they're doing it so they can have influence in the next, uh, you know, administration or over that specific politician, that specific area. So that's my speculation is that we'll just throw money everywhere. But it, it, okay, it could be a Pied Piper situation as well. I don't necessarily know. And But the thing is, what if Joe Arpaio had won? I mean, then what? <laughs> so there's that. Uh, but the actual other issue here is Elizabeth Warren's hypocrisy for taking that donor money. Uh, she did not disavow her super PAC. And she said, in fact, uh, look, if everybody else is going to have a super PAC, then I'm going to have a super PAC. Well, now, wait a minute. There is one candidate who didn't 
have a super PAC. That's Bernie Sanders. However, however, she said, no, no, no. Uh, Bernie Sanders is super PAC too. Really? Which one? Which one? Uh, our, our revolution? That's not a super PAC. In fact, they did no independent expenditures during this entire cycle. Uh, what, Sunrise Movement? Oh, is that a super PAC? No, it's not a super PAC. Uh, and so political action committees, by the way, are not the same as super PACs. And so, look, the fact is there is this massive hypocrisy because Elizabeth Warren had sworn off super PACs until she was doing poorly. And then when she was just about out of money, well, okay, we'll let the super PAC do this and spend, like I said, $9, $9 million pre-Super Tuesday. And so that's it. Now, the late formation, by the way, of the campaign committee uh, meant that the group was able to legally display disclosure of its donors until a month after it was created and millions of voters had already gone to the polls. So understand that too. Also part of the hypocrisy. Elizabeth Warren said, oh no, we shouldn't have dark money. We should be very upfront about our donors. Okay, well, who's funding your super PAC? I'm not going to tell you until we legally have to. And that just happens to be after Super Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, look, it's not just her. It was her campaign as well. Kristen Orthman, Warren's communications director, previously told reporters that Warren believes Persist PAC and other all older Super PAC should disclose their donors before Super Tuesday. Except that they didn't have to. <laughs> And so they didn't do it before Super Tuesday. I mean, it's a little late. And by the way, the intended effect had already happened. Bernie Sanders campaign, they got clobbered on Super Tuesday. It's not because there wasn't an Elizabeth Warren endorsement, uh, although it, that hurt massively. Let's be honest with you. Uh, but look, Super Tuesday was preceded by Bloody Monday, which is when all the establishment came together. They coalesced behind Joe Biden, Amy uh, Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg dropped out. Uh, they threw their endorsements right behind Biden. Uh, and not only that, but you also had um, uh, this this massive momentum leading into Super Tuesday from South Carolina. Uh, you know, you had uh, James Clyburn endorsing, doing a massive endorsement of Joe Biden, allowing him to win South Carolina. And so all of that, not good for Bernie Sanders, man. Uh, and add into that glowing press. All of those fawning pieces on Joe Biden. Oh, what a leader. He's, he's electable. That's what we need in America today. Someone who's electable that could beat Donald Trump. Except that now we're right in the middle of a crisis where someone should be presidential. Who's the only one being presidential at this point? Bernie Sanders. Donald Trump's out there spreading misinformation every single day. Joe Biden, he was hiding for a while. Hiding with Biden, right? And then on Monday, resurfaced for a short town hall. Whereas Bernie Sanders has been running events and live streams for days, you know, telling people, keeping people updated on uh, what's going on with COVID-19, talking about policy positions, advocating for them, uh, and holding roundtables and events and, and even having musical guests, like virtual rallies. Uh, and so he's doing all this stuff while Joe Biden was trying to figure out which way, wh which way to look into his camera as he was running off screen. I mean, leadership right? Leadership. Uh, and so unfortunately, we don't have leadership right now. And Elizabeth Warren, she helped make that happen. Just like in 2016, when she refused to endorse Bernie Sanders before Massachusetts, right? Before that primary, allowing Hillary Clinton to take an easy win and also disrupt the delegate counts in several states for no gain for herself, she's done it again. Betrayed progressives, 
Uh, and that's why, unfortunately, even though she's had some good votes in this, uh, you know, in the Senate. And I say some good votes and she's had some bad votes as well. She is no progressive ally. And I'm sorry to say, uh, but this, I mean, this super PAC, this hypocrisy is the last straw. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.